Hello, welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to make a herb sickle. It's a bit like one of these. This is a normal garden sickle. It's what I found in the back of my garden shed. You can tell by the state of it, I've never actually used the thing. It's a bit like this, but miniature and with a longer handle. I'm going to try and make it out of this. So a while ago, my granddad gave me a whole load of tools. Um, some of them super useful. Like this copper mallet, for instance, I use all the time. And um, panel beating hammer, which I use loads. But this, this is just a knackered old chisel and I've already got loads of those. But I thought it would be good provenance for something to turn into what I'm going to give as a present to a, a precious person on their birthday, which is in a couple of days. <laughs> so pressure is on. This then will become a sickle, hopefully. So there's that big garden sickle. And what we're going to have is something, I reckon the handle will be a bit like this uh, wood turning gouge that I've got. So a nice long handle and if you imagine a curved shape on that, a crescent shape on that, a bit tighter than this curve here. And something you can either grab at that end and hook herbs with or grab there and do the same. Yeah, so it'd be something like that. So a bit of a swell, a bit more of a swell there than on this, on this one. So narrowing it there, up there, right like that. Okay. Put that back on there, and then we'll draw around this will give us some idea. So I think go past the center line. Something like that. Is there enough metal in here to do that? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. I do of course have other pieces of metal, other things that I could turn into this, but I just thought it'd be nice to try and repurpose Grandless Chisel, so that's what I'm going to try first. Uh, let's get rid of this handle. I suspect just a few taps of the hammer should destroy this handle quite easy. Yeah, there we go, it's splitting already. Oh, that was the easy bit. I'm going to let the whole thing come up to critical temperature, so a nice bright orange, and just let it soak it out for a little bit first, and then we'll get to work. Having the tang already made up there, it does give me a bit of a head start, but also it may, might make it really fiddly to hang on to. Right? Well, let's see if that's an issue. there that I've been squidging it this way and that's having two effects. One it's pushing it out a bit, it's also thickening it up this way. That's all in aid of getting more material that I can draw out and start to curve around into that crescent shape. It's quite a nice uh, tool steel to work with. And I guess it's probably what they call 01, just a total guess. <laughs> That's kind of old-fashioned tool steel. Uh, old-fashioned chisel, that's for sure. Just going to measure this and see how far out I need to draw it. Every time I hit it, I tend to push it 
out this way. It's going to tend to lengthen it more than going that way. Tell that stretched out quite a lot. Originally, I think this was um, an inch wide, the same as this ruler. As you can see, we're down to roughly half that. And it's fairly consistent this way. What I want to do now is make it consistent that way. See, there's a taper, it's fatter here than it is up there. So, we'll sort that out next, and then we'll see. about that far off the length we need. It's, there's loads of thickness down here, so I'll thin that out a bit and we'll get there actually. There we go, by filling out this last little bit here, I've now gained enough material, we are at length, so that's great. Next up, I'm going to heat it up again and then just tidy it up as it is, to make it nice and consistent, so we've got a consistent width this way and that way. interesting phenomenon. As I'm hammering the bevels in, um, because I'm compressing this side of the material, it's going to be stretching out this edge and thus it will be curving over there. So this is something you get anyway when you're forging the knife and you have to correct for. And of course I'm going to have to substantially over correct because I want it to curve this way with that bevel, the cutting edge, on the inside of course. So we've got on the back side of it that thick <laughs> and on the bevel edge that thick. So I'm going to take the bevel down to about a millimetre I think. Yeah, I'm going to do that all the way up, keep it nice and tidy and then I'll start the curve. using a flatter to make it flat.
So that's just a way of tidying up uh, this back edge away from the bevels. Um, it's a way of leaving it looking forged without the rippliness of all the hammer marks. So it's not going to look like this because this one, as with most garden sickles, has got this kink in it here so that when you're using it really low down your hand isn't hitting the ground. So I don't need that bit. But what I do need is this right over here. Sharper, I think, a bit sharper than that. aiming for. Um, that's what I've got at the moment. It turns out there was more material um, one side hammered in the bevels here. So that's the bevel side and there's the fatter back edge. It was a bit longer um, so that's why I've ended up with that. But I think that would probably work if I pull the tang back this way. That's not quite right. Put it a bit like that. Yeah, bring that round again. Let's see how that looks. It's quite close now to a final shape. Where I've marked the chalk there, I think mean, I'm going to just cut that nose. Because it's so thin on the edge, I don't really fancy my chances of um, shaping that. Um, yeah, let's tidy up that a bit bigger, I'm okay with that. I'll grind that bit off, like I say. Um, but I think, now I've tidied all this up, I've got to put a little bit more curve in there and pull that tip over a tad. And it wants to be about there. I'm going to put this, add to this bend, put a little bit of that back in. And then I'll do something about that curve, it's not quite right. What I'm going to do now is just tidy this up and then I'll normalise it. So by normalise I mean bring it up to a nice bright orange and then let it cool gently. And that will just relax the metal a bit because it's had quite a tough day. back up to a nice bright orange critical temperature and then I'll just let it cool just outside of the forge and that'll normalise the metal. So basically just means all the molecules in there they'll bring them up till they start loosening at critical heat and then it'll let them settle down and it'll 
get rid of some of the stresses that I've just brutally hammered in. I'll be back in an hour or so. In the meantime, I'll have a cold drink, or maybe a couple. Just about cold now. I'm quite liking the shape. I will, what I'll do now is just take that tip down. Let's compare it to the original drawing then. <laughs> it seems to get bigger and bigger. I'm okay with that. I'm still okay with that. So if we have the handle. If anything, it's going to suit the handle better having it this size. So I'm fine with that. Wondering out of spec as it were. And I think it's about there on the proportions as well. So I wanted it to come past the centre line. That's okay, it's different to what I had there, but I think that works. Yes, it's pretty close. I've tweaked it enough, I'm going to bring it back up to a critical again and then I'll let it normalise. Just like I did before, I hope it relaxes with that. Good. While that cools down, it's a good time to think about the handle. There's one option for making the handle. This is, I think it was an old axe handle. It's, uh, yeah. It gave up by splitting. There's a split all the way down, that's why there's tapes on it. Um, there's the end of the split, but that means that this amount of handle is fine. The reason I've saved it is because this is, as it says there, genuine hickory. certainly get something that long out of what's left of that. The other option would be some wood from around here, which might be nice. Um, it's slightly longer than any of the bits I've got saved in the workshop. There are some bits outside, I'm going to go and have a look at those. The trouble is pulling something out of the firewood pile at this time of year, because it's so hot, it's the middle of summer at the moment, um, it's likely to have shakes and splits all the way through it because yeah, that's just stuff that I've stacked in a heap with the intention of drying it out as fast as possible. So probably not suitable for wood turning. Uh, I will go and have a route around. So this is all the firewood for the winter. Like I say, that's probably not much cop. Well, I might end up rooting through that. But here, in the 
this big pile of nettles, there's some um, decent lumps of oak. There's a lump that looks fairly sound. Although, there's quite a lot of creatures been eating that end, so that might not be a goer. Buddlier, but I don't think I'm going to be able to turn that. <laughs> it's not very structurally sound wood. Yeah, let's go and have a look at these. Well, having been and looked quite extensively through the firewood pile, um, perhaps unsurprisingly I've concluded it's mostly firewood <laughs> and generally not suitable for turning. Most of what's there is just split and yeah it, it would be a waste of time. I, even if I turned something nice out the middle of a piece of wood I think it would dry out even more and then just go shaky and splitty and all generally horrible. I think this is probably my best bet. So in a way it's a shame not to use a piece of wood from the woodland outside the workshop but it does have some provenance and it goes along with a the theme of uh, using otherwise scrap pieces of uh, bits and bobs. Let's give it a shot anyway. So uh, over to woodworking corner. Of course the nice thing about using this is it's almost round as it is so it'll be, take minimal preparation before I can mount it in the lathe. Probably too long, but I'm going to start with that and yes, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. for it to look a bit like this one I think but uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> I'll know when I get there. Uh, this is the brass ferrule from Grandad's chisel. Turn down to that, down to that, and down to that. Much. The shapes should start to emerge then.
So what I've been aiming for is always it should be um, <laughs> it should be moving into a valley or up to a peak. I think that that's overall what I'm trying to go for with this. So it's the line it shouldn't ripple as it goes down to this valley and then it should move up smoothly into this peak and then down again. So it's yes. <laughs> Hopefully that makes some kind of sense. That's basically that's what I've been bearing in mind as I've been working on this and trying to make it a bit thinner than I would if it was for me. Getting that out already. And inside the top of the lathe you can see the pulleys that select the gears. So these are the gears of these are the speeds available. And we've been on the second slowest. So if I do I've just slackened off this belt so I can move it over now. I'm going to put it on the fastest one. And then down here is the motor. And it's got the opposite set of pulleys, if you like. And that retensions it. And we are now ready to go. I think it's smooth enough to go straight in at 120. I don't want to go too smooth with it because it's a it's a tool and you, <laughs> and you need to grip it. Oh, that reminds me. I was going to put in some grooves. Yes, I'll do that now. So I'll have to slow it down again. Back to number two. Finishing just gives it that final sort of sheen. Yeah. I think that came out really well. I'm really pleased with the way that came out. It feels dinky in in my hands, which means it should be just right for the uh, person it's intended for. So we've got this, the actual sickle, and the ferrule to fit on. So the ferrule sits on there, and then that. What I'm going to do is burn a hole in there. I'll pilot it first. I got three and a half mil drill bit.
bring that back up to critical temperature and once again let it normalise. Once it's cooled down, the next job will be putting in a rough grind. Attempt to do an out grinder. It's a new day and hopefully I can finish this off. Well I have to really because it's my partner's birthday tomorrow and that's who this is for. So yes, time is ticking on. <laughs> I think it should be okay. Um, the only really sketchy bit left is the heat treatment. It can all go wrong in the heat treatment but yeah. when, I'll cross that bridge in a little bit. First I have to refine the bevels. So what we've got here is about a millimetre left. So that's the back side of it, which you can see is much thicker. I'm going to bring that down, just, just form that down. I will take it to an edge, I'm not going to attempt to sharpen or anything. But basically I'm using the opportunity now, while the metal is as soft as it can be, also it's not anywhere near as soft as say mild steel because this is high carbon steel but it's much softer now than after heat treatment is what I'm trying to say. For instance I could probably file it with a hand file which after it's treated I wouldn't be able to. I've got one of these flap discs in here. This is a 40 grit flap disc, which, um, but it's well worn, so it's not actually cutting like a 40, degree, uh, 40 grit would normally. That seems to be doing the job. I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. So some sickles are um, chisel grind, so it would be flat on one side, and then you just do the bevel on the other side. For this, I'm going to do it both sides. This sickle here, actually, this is beveled like a knife, so it's, it goes in at, at both sides on, on the blade. You might be wondering why I left it to the last minute before starting work on this present, but I just couldn't decide what to make. <laughs> so, so here we are, going hell for leather. That's fine. Focus is the mind. Working my way just to taking off tiny amounts of material each time and just bringing each side, each bevel in until they meet. Right, for this phase, I think that's it. I've left a bit of meat, I haven't brought it completely to an edge. Um, I just think that'll be better for the heat treating to leave it like that. It's staying nice and straight when I heat it up, which is, a, I think, a really good sign. That was an issue I was having when I made the prangs, um, because it's, it was so hard to get a, such a long blade uh, consistently heated. They were taken on a bend and then, uh, anyway, <laughs> this seems to be doing well. I'll leave that for an hour or so. Um, time for the heat treatment then. This is the olive oil. Normally I have to preheat it to make it runny, but it's so hot outside today I've just left it in the sun for a couple of hours and that's done the trick. So the heat treatment is the process of hardening the steel. And what I'm going to do is, as I did with the normalisation cycles, is bring it up to a nice bright orange. So all the molecules, all the structure of the steel will start to relax. Um, but instead of letting it cool slowly, so that it all relaxes down into a softened state, I'll dunk it in the oil and that will freeze it. Once that's done, and if that's done successfully, if I haven't put in a big bend in the wrong place or anything like that, if it all comes out nice, it'll go straight in an oven to be tempered, and tempering is the process of taking that treatment slightly back. Immediately after heat treating, that's when the metal will be very, very brittle, um, almost as brittle as glass. 
So the tempering takes that back to the kind of hardness that you actually want. cracks I wasn't really expecting any cracks but there was a chance it would take a twist or something when you're heat treating knives um, I've got a little jig that I put in the vise and if it takes a bend you get about a minute before it fully hardens but with a shape like this well I didn't have to deal with it so that's very good yeah that's lovely and straight excellent See if it's actually hardened. Uh, I'm going to be careful not to drop it. I don't think it would shatter, but it, it, it might break and then I just, I'd probably cry. Oh yeah, that's breaking. That noise there, that's very hard steel. Um, this is the noise of mild steel. And I can feel the file bite into that metal. This is just skating it. Yeah. <laughs> so by waiting until it's cold enough to handle, it's just letting everything settle as it is in its fully hardened state. I'm going to use this today simply because uh, it can be solar powered, which is nice. I've set it for 230 uh, um, Celsius which is flat out on this. I'll set the timer for 60 minutes. I'm going to do two cycles of one hour. One hour done. Back in again for round two. That's it, second and final round of tempering is done. Check again there. Yeah, still lovely and straight. The next stage we'll be putting an edge on the sickle. What I will try is some of these um, flap wheels. So this is an 80 grit flap wheel. It's just loads of bits of 80 grit aluminium oxide paper in there. This is similar, but it's got scotch bright in between, which means it gives more of a uh, polishing effect. I'm going to put them in the die grinder and try that.
what I'm trying to do here is get rid of the um, scratches that I put in using this one. Um, so same procedure as with the handle actually, so just every time, whatever you're using, whatever abrasive, is trying to get rid of the marks from the previous abrasive. We're back over in Woodworking Corner. This is the handle, which I'm gonna glue on in a bit. Normally, final sharpening I do with these ceramic rods. So if I have a knife, I just do that down one side and the other side and keep doing that until it's super duper sharp. That's not going to work with this. <laughs> At all. I've got one of these sharpeners which I normally uh, avoid as much as possible and tell other people to avoid using because these sort of sharpeners you can see there it's got the uh, carbide inserts and they're brutal basically, they're brutal on knives. But for setting an edge to begin with, it might be my best option. A bit of scrap paper. At some point I should be able to cut this. Mm. <laughs> That's just ripping. Frustrating. I have had a cup of coffee, a piece of malt loaf, and a good old ponder, and I've come up with a completely different strategy. I think the issue with not being able to get this properly sharp is that the bevels are just too fat. So I've made um, uh, convex bevels because I've because of the because of using that um, flap disc the bevels go down like that, which makes them really strong. Um, it's actually, that's what's on this one here, but it leaves too much material in the middle of the bevel there to get a properly fine gradient, if that makes any kind of sense. So I was trying to think of how I could rectify that. Um, <laughs> again, it's trying to fit this in any of the machinery that I've got then I figured I'd possibly be able to use the old bench grinder. So I've dragged it out from the darkened corner where it normally lives and I think if I take this guide off I should be able to get my sickle blade all the way around. What this will do, because this is a wheel and the wheel will be going like that into the bevel, it will produce a very slight hollow grind. If, <laughs> if I can get it right. This, yeah. I think it's worth a try. I, I don't like it as it is. I hope you're admiring the paint scheme on my bench grinder. I think it's pretty unique. <laughs> my mum did this about 30 years ago, something like that. As you can see there I'm nibbling away at the middle of that bevel. Um, this is the only way I could think of of taking down the middle of the bevel and making the gradient more shallow. Just thinking here, if I can, 
I can judge upright quite well. <laughs> And if I could set this guide up, so I set it, I just got to keep this upright and touching the wheel and then rotate it. That would be nice and consistent then. So that now, sit it on there, keep this vertical. And go there. I'm going to try that. That is a much better bevel. I can just feel it. There's a lot more material gone. It doesn't have that convex feel to it now. It feels pretty flat. This has got much more potential. I'm feeling much more positive about the whole thing. Because now I'm left with a whole load of marks. I used to have two wheels on here. I, and I think this might be the coarse one. Whatever that wheel was, um, it's long gone to be replaced by this brush. I did have a look for it, can't find it, so that's that. Now, I bet on camera it doesn't look any different, but I'm much, much happier <laughs> with that bevel now, with these bevels rather. Much happier. Well, to celebrate, I'm going to fit the handle. Now, I would normally just knock it home and, and then have a friction fit, but I'm absolutely paranoid of splitting the handle. <laughs> and at this stage, yeah, that doesn't bear thinking about it. If you remember what seemed like a long time ago, I burned that square hole in the end and I made the mark on it where it's supposed to go. So that almost fits now. Don't know why, because it did it did fit completely <laughs> when I burnt it in. Blended down, so we know it's going to fit and fit perfectly. This is five minute aerodite, and in this weather, at this temperature, that's probably accurate. Gently clamp that up, and I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes or so, so it goes off, and I'll be back. Let's have a cut. Yeah, caught now, 20 minutes. What if I use this now? so different with the new bevels. So I'm running it through the ceramic one, not the carbide one. And that should just put a finer edge on it. cut paper. Or will it cut herbs? <laughs> I'm going to oil the handle now, oil the blade while I'm at it as well. Um, 
This is uh, linseed oil. Um, yeah, let's just do everything. I'll be wiping off most of this oil, but enough will stay on there and it will just encourage a black oxide sort of finish. That hickory wood actually comes up really rather well. So consider this handle was a broken axe handle only, well, only yesterday. There we go, done. <laughs> Not a moment too soon. That's it, just about done. I'm actually rather pleased with that in the end. <laughs> it was a bit of a struggle to get there at times. Um, I actually really enjoyed making this and it's great to take something that was a broken old chisel and turn it into something new and functional. So that was a real delight. There was admittedly a bit of a low point when I thought I wasn't going to get the bevels in and couldn't get a proper edge to it, but we got there in the end. So thanks to the older uh, bench grinder. I'm going to do one more coat of oil on there once this one's had time to dry off a bit. And then I should get up early in the morning and deliver this and myself <laughs> to my partner. And uh, I hope it goes down well. It wasn't actually something that was asked for, this is going to be a surprise. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, before I go, better give it a test. I don't have any herbs to test it on. Um, patrons will know what happened <laughs> to my garden recently. I do have some wildflowers and that'll have to do.